All right. Well, you know, even a slow reading month is still a good reading month. <laughs> So I'm going to be sharing my March book reviews. It was a very slow month for me. I had so much going on. I started so many books, but I only finished three. So those are the ones I'm going to be talking about. So let me open up my Goodreads. I think I already have them pulled up. And yes, I do. <laughs> All right, let me situate some things here. The first book that I finished in March was The Mask of Ghosts. Uh, I've been loving this series, so let's just get right into it. I thoroughly enjoyed this installment of the Ghost Rider series, even though it was probably the scariest and goriest one so far. The author doesn't rely on gore to shock or pull in her readers, but for the story being told, I understand why there was so much of it. Still, none of it felt gratuitous. So I am not like an avid horror reader. Um, for some reason, I just really connect with this author's work so I can I can kind of take it. But this one kind of challenged me a little bit because it was, it was definitely horror. <laughs> Moving on. With that out of the way, I want to say how happy I was to see the two main characters back side by side in full fighting force even if they weren't always on the same page, but that's just how their story goes. In more ways than one, this installment becomes a family affair. While we've seen some ghostly relative interaction in the past, this installment tackles family dynamics in many ways, exploring the relationship between siblings and in-laws, on top of unearthing generational secrets that help and protect no one while building up shame and regret. So if you know anything about generational curses or secrets or things like that, this book kind of um, goes into that a little bit. Um, I've said this before and nothing has changed, but I can't stand a book that ends on a cliffhanger and that's what this book does. Oddly enough, I can stand it a bit simply because the central conflict in this installment is addressed and then the cliffhanger serves as a teaser for what's to come in the next book. Luckily for me, I've all, I already have Carol of the Ghost queued up. So just a quick segue <laughs> into why I don't like cliffhangers. I feel like cliffhangers are, it, for most part, is lazy writing. A uh, author gets to a certain point in the book and they either just stop writing because they couldn't figure out what to do with the rest of the story, or they stop writing so that they can sell you another book. I can handle a cliffhanger if it's done properly, and I feel like that's what this author has done. She, whatever the central conflict or whatever what's happening in that particular installment, if that's addressed, if there's some kind of closure at the end, and then you have a cliffhanger that kind of serves as a teaser, I'm okay with that. I don't love it, but I'm okay with it because the story doesn't just stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get a sense that that issue was addressed. It's going to continue. I don't like it when stories literally just stop, like, stop in the middle of the action. It's like, you're just trying to sell another book. My rant is done. Highly recommended to fans of horror, complex paranormal situations, diverse characters, and smart dark fiction. So that was The Mask of Ghosts. The next one on the list is Bad Fairy Strikes Again. This one is on pre-order, so go ahead and get it. Let's dive right in. Actual rating, 4.75. I almost feel silly writing the actual rating, but I wanted to express how great this story is while recognizing that it's not as awesome as the first book. But what sequel really is? This is a wonderful book, whether at 5 or 4 point, uh, 4.75 stars. I, I'm just keeping it real <laughs> and apparently showing my age with that outdated catchphrase. This magical world has, again, proven to be whimsical and lighthearted and yet still very capable of tackling some much-needed subjects concerning perception, judgment, and the treatment of others. I like the way this book helps young readers cope with a sense of loss and acknowledging the empowerment that occurs 
when one takes responsibility for the betterment of all, not just oneself. Some pretty deep stuff in a fluffy and sweet package. I also adore the language of this book and have enjoyed watching the Instagram Reels released to explain some of it. If you're not following this author, please consider it. It'll brighten your day. A disclaimer, I received a digital arc with no obligation to review. Highly recommend it to young readers, girls and boys, and their families. So yeah, I'm loving this series. And one more to go. See, this is going to be short, people, even with my rants. The last one is Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker. This was such a lovely read. It's something I wish I could have read as a kid and something I'll share with any young ones I know. I adored the illustrations and felt like I could dance to the rhythm of the rhyming word throughout. It was very, I was very impressed with how well and how far the author and artist were able to go in depicting the racism Baker experienced in her life. And of course, I enjoyed hearing the telling of her bravery and her contribution to the fight for freedom and equality. There isn't much more to say. I want all kids, but especially any little any little girls with brown skin to experience this book. Highly recommend it. So quickly, just going back up to what I'm saying about like the rhyming words, it's written in what's called free verse. So it's very poetic sounding. Sometimes things are rhyming, sometimes they're not rhyming, but it's very musical. I mean, and it should be. I mean, this is Josephine Baker we're talking about. So I was, you know, concerned about how, you know, that was going to be depicted. You know, she, you know, was a very musical person, a dancer, performer, entertainer. And I feel like this book really captured that really well. So those are my um, book reviews for the month of March. I'm still ahead in my overall good years, good years, <laughs> overall good reads um, challenge for the year. And um, I guess I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> All right. So um, let me know what you thought about what I read. If you want to make a recommendation, I'm always up for it. And uh, stay safe. Bye for now.